Hello. So, um, it's another spring day in the garden. A bit cloudy today, so I thought I'd try a bit of filming. And this is kind of a, like, a primer video for the video I really want to make. So I want to make a video about grafting, but obviously I need both hands to do that, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to mount the camera. I don't have a tripod, so... Um, but I thought I'd just make a video where I can zoom in on the detail and that first in case I need to explain things subsequently. So probably I shouldn't be showing you this tree because it's a bit of a disaster. Um, <laughs> so I do have to take responsibility for this one being planted too close to the fence. But it was supposed to be a dwarf in rootstock and um, turns out it's not so it grew a lot bigger than uh, I was planning and um, yeah so before we look at the obvious thing that's wrong with it I just want to show you this bit of the tree so you can see like the bark is really like gnarly um, and the reason for that is that for some reason the cats so the, the from the moment I planted this tree, the cats absolutely love to um, use it as a clawing post. So these are the neighbour's cats. So I've got plenty of trees in the garden. I'd be quite happy for them to claw. But no, the one tree, <laughs> the apple tree that I'm trying to grow, they claw. So that, that has kind of like affected the tree quite a lot. And it might well have... Um, some disease in it I'm not too sure but um, I know it was getting it was getting very big and uh, I mean I've got an interest in hedge laying so um, I often do hedge laying in the winter and I wanted to see if I could lay an apple tree in the same kind of way so this one was a bit large to do that with so normally you would do it with something that's uh, you know like a hazel that's quite flexible maybe uh, two year, two or three years growth. Whereas I think this one, I don't know how old this was, but it's quite a hardwood apple, and um, I don't know what the the width of that trunk is. Um, you know, at least twice my um, my own span, I guess. Um, so um, anyway, so what I did was I, I chopped. So, so when you lay a tree, you, you chop, um, you use either like a small hatchet or what's called a bill hook to take slices away um, until you're left with only a small part of the tree that's flexible. And then you lay down the main trunk of the tree. But you want it so that, um, that it's on a slight incline so that the sap continues to rise so you can see on this one so there's quite a bit of wood in the middle here that's structural wood so that's kind of died back but then you can see on here there's growth so it's still the tree's still very much alive but it's um you know its vigor will be massively impacted so it's, it's kind of dead in the center there and then down this part you can see I've got these shoots coming up here, so they're keeping the circulation going around here. I'm not sure exactly where the graph union is on this, so these might well be um, rootstock growth or the variety. I'm not too sure. So what I've done is on this one here, so this is from the other year, um, I've grafted on a variety I do want. You can see that's alive there, there's a green green bud there. Um, so normally when you're grafting what you do is you take what's called ski on wood, which is the variety you want, and you attach it to um, a root stock, which is what determines kind of like the overall size and, and vigour of the tree. Um, and then you have a few buds and then you chop it off and then what happens is those buds sprout like this one has and so um, 
I'm hoping to grow a nice little diagonal up against this fence here. But um, yeah, I thought I'd put some other graphs on these shoots that are springing up. Now, but I do need to be a bit careful because um, if I kill, so some, so if the if the graph doesn't take, it often kills or or like it dies back a lot from where the graft union is and I don't want to like mess up the circulation that's going on here so um, yeah anyway that's kind of my plan and what I'll need to do let's just back off a bit what I'll need to do oh no comes this here yeah what I need to do is um Uh, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> um, yes, set this camera up so that it gets kind of the bit that I'm working on with enough detail to make it kind of worth filming. So, yeah, that might be a bit tricky. I probably where I'm sitting at the moment, I try and I don't have a tripod, so I probably get um, a stool or something and set the camera on that. Okay, cheers then.